With the release of American Gods, it really got me thinking about some source material that we have had seen in graphic novel form. I'm a huge fan of comic books and graphic novels, and there's a few stories that I think are really great, really interesting, that I want to see developed onto the small screen, into a TV format, miniseries, anything like that. And I was thinking about the ones I really like, some of the stuff I want, really want to see, and I got a list here of seven series that I want to see adapted onto TV. Have these been adapted before in other mediums? Some of them have. Some of them have been adapted into other mediums, but right here I just want to talk about these ones because these are things that really matter to me. I really like all these books for what they are. So here are my seven graphic novel series that should be adapted into television. Coming in at number seven, I'll be honest with you guys, I have not seen, or I've not read all of the source material for this one. I'm not caught up. I've read the first couple of issues, and I really wish I got back into it. I really do, because it's such a unique and interesting premise, and that is Saga. If you don't know what Saga is, I highly recommend going and checking it out, looking it up, everything about this story. It's such a fun, visceral world that you didn't expect to take such a big stand on where it became and how popular it became. Really great about family and story and love. It's such a unique flavorful story that I just think works so well for TV. It's a really unique story, and it works perfectly in the graphic novel medium, in the comic book medium. But seeing something like this on, you know, the small screen of TV, it would be so beautiful, so larger than life, such a unique and interesting premise that I don't really think we've seen yet, and I just think it could be very beautiful, very creative, very interesting, and it would be something that would just change over time and be so much more interesting and unique. And I think Saga is a really great way to get you into a world like this. And it would be really great for more people to watch it and they want to go back and read the source material, which is something I want to see for all of these. So number seven, I have Saga. Number six, we've had a movie of this and I don't think the movie did the series justice and that is Watchmen. I really did like Watchmen. I think Watchmen was a really great movie, really fascinating. And there's just been reports that we might get an animated Watchmen movie that's rated R. Let's get a miniseries, an HBO, a Showtime, anything like that. A miniseries following these characters from Watchmen. Tell the Black Freighter comic. Tell all the stories that we can that we haven't got to see on the big screen. Sure, we can get a really long animated movie. We can really get one, but you can really flesh out the characters and tell every little inch and detail of the story if we put it into a miniseries. 10 episodes, 8 episodes, whatever time you need, you can get the whole story fleshed out, get all our characters looking great again. Watchmen is probably the quintessential comic book and graphic novel that just shows everything about the world that is so beautiful and just diverse and dark. It's such a realistic portrayal of everything going on in the world at the time. I think it'd be a crime not to have it done in such a beautiful way that we could see on the small screen, really get new people invested, and just be so creative and so fun Watchmen is such a great comic, a great series, and I want to see it done justice, not in like a two and a half hour cartoon animated thing, but in like a 10, 10 episode arc of all these characters we know and respect. I think it'd be beautiful, it'd be really creative and original. So number six, I have Watchmen. Coming in at number five is a comic that I, again, I'm not really familiar with. I've read some of the aspects of it, a few different things here and there. But it's Sandman. With the American Gods being done here, I know Neil Gaiman has said he would love to do Sandman next, get that on the big screen or the small screen or do something just to get it out there and so we can watch it. There's so much going on in these different story arcs, so many different characters and different things we can focus on in an episode or in various different formats. It's such an extensive and interesting universe and so integral to some just visual and psychedelic storytelling that it, it's just a crime not to see it done in a different format than a graphic novel. Again, it works really well in graphic novel form. All of these things do. But I think it's a missed opportunity if we don't see it grow and become something bigger, something just great for everybody who doesn't know what the material is. Sandman, if you haven't seen it, you have to go check it out. Just pick up any issue any graphic novel you find, read it, and then you'll want to go back and learn more about everybody involved and all these different characters. And It's such a big, extensive universe. We can really get some different episodes, and it can go on for a long time. So yeah, I really think Sandman is a great series to adapt to the small screen. So that's my number five. 
Coming in at number four is kind of this really weird choice. It's not a big pop in universe thing that we've seen before. If you're familiar with Rick Remender, he did this story arc a little while back. It's still going on, actually. It's one of these stories that I just loved everything about. I thought it was really unique and creative. It's called Low. Low, it's such a small scale thing, but the reason why I think we could adapt this one, and I think this one could work well in TV, it could work really well in movies too. If we have, if we see a really great success in Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets, I can see people wanting to go back and adapt this one. Low, it's, it's kind of aquatic, like people are living underground, there's been a bad thing that happened on the surface world, so humanity has fled to underseas, a lot of stuff happening there. We see, it focuses on a strong female protagonist and her daughter are two of the main characters in this. Really unique, different kind of creatures. Kind of more big budget, but if we can get a lot of more graphic novel stuff going on into the film and in TV, I think this is one that could really adapt and make people interested. It's such a unique story, something creative that takes flavor and a lot of different things from a lot of stuff we've seen before. But the way it presents itself is something I really grabbed to and I gravitated towards. And I think it's a really interesting concept that can definitely be done that we haven't seen before. I would love to see something like this just adapted and be unique and fun. It could really pull off something unique. It really could. And it'd be so creative just to watch and see how everything changes and moves and just acts in a different way. It's such a fun, different thing. It's a really interesting concept, and I think Lo is such a different presence than we've seen, because we've been to space and all that stuff, but seeing humanity underwater, it's different. And kind of the same, so it's easy to market. So at number four, I have Lo. And at number three is one of a just a great book, a great story. If you've seen Feud, it, this thing is kind of the same in the sense of how it handles ageism and sexism, and that's Velvet. If you haven't seen Velvet, this is one of my favorite no graphic novels out there. It's such a unique and different story that it's still the same as a lot of stuff we've seen. This old, retired, ex kind of spy lady has to go back into this world after a few things happen and lead her down there. What an interesting concept this is. You can get an aging actress, an aging actress who needs a big part like this, give her something great. A lot of great stuff can happen from this and come of it. I think it's such a fun little story that can also take itself seriously at times, but you can play on kind of the humor of certain things. Velvet is a really interesting concept, a really great character study for Velvet, and it's such a fun little premise that I just think, you know, a lot of these things that I've put on this list so far, they're about like bigger than life stories, larger than life. This is just about an old spy who has to come back into a world and do something. It's an easily marketable thing that you can just bring back to television. Really great characters, really great casting, really justify what this series is. And it would just be some great television that I don't think we've seen in a long time. So number three, I have Velvet. Coming in at number two, this one has tried to be adapted before, and I think it is currently in the works to be adapted, and that's because it's such a great concept, a great story. That is Why the Last Man. Why the Last Man follows the story of Yurik. He is the last man on Earth after every other guy just randomly disappears. Some stuff happens to them, and he's on a mission to find out what happened to the men and to go find his girlfriend. He's got a pet monkey. This is the kind of story, the kind of plot, and the kind of character that any man would be out to get this role of, because he's surrounded by women, he's going to be the main part of this, main focus of the story of Why the Last Man. This story is such great television, just waiting to be told. The characters are important, the story is great, who wouldn't want to be Yurik in this case? I think it's such an interesting and great story that I just want to see brought to television. It's so cool, it's so unique. It's really interesting, and it's got so much going on for it, with a pet monkey involved, ampersand. It's such a different thing that we haven't seen on television before, because we need a lot of male characters, or anything like that. There's only one male character in this series, and he, we're going to follow him on a story as he's going through a bunch of these different things. A lot of female empowerment in this show, a lot of everything that you need to have a good series done in this series, just to make it great on television. I know it's tried to be adapted before, and I think there's currently FX, I think, kind of is trying to work on it. Was it FX? Somebody's trying to work on this, and I understand why. It's very understandable why somebody would want to work on this, because it's such an important story, something so unique to tell, and I cannot wait to see it done if it ever gets done. That's why it is my number two. Why The Last Man? Coming in at number one for me, this is going to be a weird choice. There's never been a graphic novel series or a series that's not Marvel or DC that I think I've been so intrigued by in a while. That is Sex Criminals. 
if you have no idea what Sex Criminals is, it's this really intriguing story about these two people who find each other and fall in love because they realize they have the same ability. That once they achieve orgasm and they, you know, get there, they can freeze time. And what do they do with that? They rob banks. They start to do illegal activities. That's why they're sex criminals. So every time they have sex, they can freeze time, go rob banks. A lot of the stuff they're doing is for their own personal benefit. And it just becomes a really wacky story that I think could break the fourth wall. You could, they could talk directly to the audience that's watching. I love sex criminals. It's such a different story that I'm just interested in. So much about it just works and is so funny. It's a comedy, of course. This has to be a comedy. The writing is so brilliant. Everything about it is just so tongue-in-cheek, and it's going to work so well if you just adapt it, get the right cast, get the right people involved. Everything about it is just so funny and fresh, and it's a really interesting take on sexual relations and that kind of stuff that we haven't really seen on television before. And I really want to see something done with it where it's just fun and just such a great story to tell. You just fall in love with the characters, fall in love with the story, and just watch as we see sex in a different light on screen that we haven't seen before. I think it'd be really interesting and a really fun thing to see. So let's just recap what my list uh, is Let's just recap what my list is. Number seven, Saga. Number six, Watchmen. Number five, Sandman. Number four, Low. Number three, Velvet. Number two, Why the Last Man. And number one, Sex Criminals. Let me know what graphic novels or comic book series you'd like to see adapted onto the small screen or big screen. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Good luck.